Hello, you're through to One Way Fighting with me, Neil Smith, and we've got a special guest for you today. With the big guy himself, the ultimate fighter fame, known all around Liverpool. Been in the Liverpool Echo in the last few years. We'll go into that in a bit. But it's me big guy, <laughs> Dave Faulkner. How you doing, mate? You all right? Yeah. So I'm, 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 I'm fantastic. I'm always gutted when people introduce you. There's no, there's no way around applause. I'm absolutely yeah. gutted. I expect it, I expect it, but we've got to get used to it in this day and, day and age, haven't we? Yeah, that's <laughs> no it. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> last time I seen you, before I go into like about you and stuff like that, last time I seen your fight was Dome. Uh, this is for me, right, basically. Yeah. You walked that was, in. Uh, right. Which fight which was it? Because of four twice, you see. Well, this, this is what I was going to say. It's when you won. It was uh, Clayton Veyer, right? Yeah. So Clayton I was at Veyer. David Clark. And yeah. I was going to introduce you with this title as the hardest man in Malta. <laughs> Did you see you the other country? Yeah, you should have. That's it. Honest God, it caught it caught fire a little bit. I was uh, when I was uh, I was teaching in Hammer at the time, and um. That, that, that's every time I walked in, that's what people were saying. Look, look, the hardest man in Malta. And I remember there was a foreign kid on the mat, and he, he was like, he was like, oh, are you from Malta? He was Turkish guy. He was like, no. And like trying to explain to him, no being lost in translation was fantastic. Yeah, just knocked out the no. cough of Malta, that's all. <laughs> yeah. well, mate, mate, you were, I just remember you walking in, and we were sat at the back, and you walked into a I can't, I can't remember the, the name of the song. It was like Ride of the Valkyries or like one of these Satan songs. Yeah, no, like... the beginning of it. The beginning of it is. It's called No W by... Um, actually, it's a space. So it's not N-W-O. Uh, N-O-W. It's No, the word space W. Yeah. Uh, I think it was an anti-George W. Bush song. I, I, I'm not into all that malarkey, but I found out later it was. But it's by a band called Ministry. Now, uh, yeah, it's got like a classic... Um, I used it about four times in fights. Um it's got like a classic intro on it, but then it bursts into like a serious heavy metal tune. And but if you watch it now on your YouTube, the um the fight, they've only got me coming into the intro. Whoever edits it is done a shit job. <laughs> I see that because they start you off announcing you, and then they show you coming in afterwards, even though you start yeah. off in the ring. I thought it was a bit mad. But yeah, yeah, just yeah. We were sat at the back watching you. You walked in. And, like, I think I turned to talk to Clark for a second and turned around and you just finished them with an armbar, like, in about a minute. Well, they, listen, that, that, that's another... I mean, this is not without sound like a... like that hole in the ceiling. Without sounding um, like Charlie Big Potato. It's just... That's why I wouldn't sell tickets to people. Because, I mean, I, I'd, I'd, wrestled, I'd wrestled since I was a kid. And they, that, that, that's a hard... Uh, tussle and I was doing kickboxing and I was just doing soul sports and I f to be honest I find them a lot harder when you've got less tools to play with it's just that when I started doing MMA it was like I don't think it came out the first round since 2008 I think it was yeah. I think with uh, Aldra Casata I went three rounds with him and it was um, ever since then even all my Thai boxing fights in K1 that they all just ended so it, again I'm, I'm not trying to sound like a big uh, like Charlie Biglicks but it was just that's why I wouldn't sell tickets to people and like, it started being a joke I'm not paying for you what you've did 30 quid 30 seconds <laughs> but yeah. uh, you're not, yeah. you're not I wrong I apologise for that then Neil <laughs> you're not yeah. wrong though because I've seen you fight a couple of times and it's like that and you know who else is like that Lee Chadwick about, I've seen Lee yeah. Chadwick fight about six times, and each time I, see, I must have seen about the, the, like three minutes of him fighting. Yeah, when you blink. Yeah, yeah. it's just him. Um, so it's just yeah, I, I get really get on with Lee as well. He's like he still put. I don't even follow MMA that much. I will follow the local lads. I follow Stano. Mm -hmm. um, he's just he's just a boss character, and I follow follow Chaddy. And funny enough, they train together now. Um, I want to follow the uh, and that. Uh, and um, there's a few new local lads who, who train with Dadden in Dadden's gym who work with me. So I'm gonna go and watch all them soon as well. So Anybody only watch all keep an eye out for. Um. God, there's, there's these, um, there's two Irish brothers, and one of them's called Tian, and they're just down to earth, and they're not like, they're not like the classic uh, coattail riders of Conor McGregor, they both hate them, which you know I like, so, uh, <laughs> they, but they're, they're just so down to earth for young kids, um, I'll tell you them for now, but what, I won't let too, too many, uh, too many things out the, out the, out the bag, because, uh, in, in the gym, getting a big head either, do you? 
Yeah, it's another thing. I mean, it, I've seen it happen to fighters uh, when smoke gets blown up their ass too early. It's like they've, it's like they get told while well, like the, the kids, like you're going to UFC, you're you're going to be in Bellator, you're going to be in. Do you know what I mean? He gets so, and they feel like they don't have to. Do, it's subconscious. They end up mm. feeling like they don't have to do the work, and um, it just seems like the sometimes the the the, the uh, career can just grind to a halt just based on that alone. Yeah, I think. Uh, you know, it's one of them, like, everyone's got their own opinions, like, it's X amount, physicality, talent and whatnot, but I think the mentality of it, like, you've got to put the work in, or you're going to end up just going away, mate, and I understand what you're saying. It's nice to give them that boost every now and then, like, though. No, it is. But, but it's like with everything, I mean, um, it's, it's, it's collecting data when you fight, it's collecting data. It's like people who are stuck in gyms where the the top dog, and they're just pummeling people on that, and it just doesn't. It's they're not prepared to get digged when he when he finally he meets someone who can. who just does something. They don't have to be supreme. They just do something different. They're not expecting. So always put yourself because I used to travel around gyms all the time. I was always in stranger danger, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how friendly someone is. You walk into their gym to spar them, train them. They're going to put it on you. It's just that it's just a thing. Even though it's friendly, and it's all they put on you. And it just, it does not help people's mentality. People get comfortable walking through that same door, that same doorway all the time, fighting with the same people. And um, it doesn't hold you in good stead. I would say be like a, like a Ronan and travel a little bit. Yeah. I mean, what I'll do is, I'll, I'll, I'll leave going through your story and like what, what you, your roots were and that, because obviously it's embedded in the wrestling and I want to talk about your luchador stuff later on. So we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, I'll speak to you about that then. But what you're saying about training and that, I mean, I, I know from having spoke to you before and seeing little bits and bobs of you online and stuff like that. So you were just sort of at the start of Bisping's career and Tom Blackledge trying to push into, you were at the Wolf Slayer at that time as main sparring partner before you got picked up for the Ultimate Fighter, weren't you? Mm. I mean, what, what was that like sparring with that level, Tom Blackledge and, and Bisping? Like, were you, were you going in there getting your ass handed to you or were you keeping up? No, no, it's just it, it just depends where people are in the um, in the camp. I mean, the worst thing you could do in the Wolf Slayer was have like be injured and come back in. Mm. I, I don't time I really got like um, I never got ever done it in my life. Um, <laughs> so there, <laughs> no, but the only time I ever, like, when you come back in, um, when you come back in, like you've had an injury. Because remember, one of the lads fell into me knee and it popped um, a medial ligament, and I came back in after it was only like three weeks. And oh God, I just felt like my fitness had just been like, it just took my soul out of me. I just couldn't do anything. I was just hugging people and holding on and getting punched and kicked in the kites and the, just holding on, just like clock watching that. But that's, that, I think that's about it. But it was good. I mean, we were all young then. We were all still learning. Like I say, it's about data collecting. You've got to keep getting hit with like caught in moves and, and you've got to be hit with punches and hit with kicks and knees and taking down and taking people down. It's just it's just a nice bunch of that. I think we were all lucky to fall in because we just got dragged in. I mean, Anthony McGambro was, was clever. He really was watching the scene closely and he handpicked all of us to be in that gym. He just poached people. Like yeah. the first time I met, met Tom, we were didn't even know about each other with drill moves, didn't even know about this being. Just started doing a bit of wrestling on the fence, and it was um, it was it was just it, it was really good at first. It was exciting. It was like not it's not like now you're going to a gym. You know what you you know what it, it, an MMA career entails. But when we went there, none of us had a clue what was going on. So it was it was exciting. It was good. It, it was renowned the Wolf Slayer. Like anybody around the, the northwest, the amount of kids I had who used to say to me, "I've been training up at Wolf Slayer," and you'd look at them and go, "You're just talking <laughs> out your ass. You haven't been there, or if you have, you, you went and did the pay one day, and that's it. You're not." Yeah, what they do? It was renowned as the gym, like wasn't it? Yeah, well, what what it is it was it was public of a night, and that's what most people said. Because I remember, like, <laughs> I, the, the classic, you know, I'm going to say about working on the door. Yeah. Someone went, hey, I do MMA in the in the Wolf's Lair. <laughs> I just I I uh, I used one of my my mate's famous quotes. <laughs> I said to the kids, just give me five minutes while I shit myself. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but it's it, but then I had the words and said, he said, I've never seen you in there. But what you don't go, but because we went in the day, we were in the pro team from day one of the day, mm -hmm. and not many of the pro lads uh, like went of a night. 
Um, to be honest, the training was that hard. I didn't ever want to train about it. I think we'd go in and roll and, or spar or something, if we could be asked. But I think we just trained local, because, like, Bisping was from Clitheroe and uh, Tom's from Wigan, which wasn't too far from Witness. I wasn't too far from Witness, but we branched away, so we didn't really see each other overnight as well. So it was like we did have, like, a different clientele. Uh, of a night who didn't even know about the lads existing of a day. I, I remember like I was training there and like there was like lads like when Bisping first got there uh, known and and uh, Tom was on um, a case rage. He was um, like the kids were excited waiting for him to come in. Oh, are they going to come in? Are they going to come in? But no, but mate, he's training of a day. He went to have a day. Yeah, it's like, but <laughs> he weren't allowed in. It was good. Yeah, but that's like what anything, mate. You turn up to any gym, the protein doesn't really train with the people who walk through the door unless there's someone you know. Yeah. It was just, it was just, I tell you what was fantastic about it. It was just literally, you never knew who was training there uh, week in, week out. It was, um, I remember, like, I remember being in the shower and I'd only watched Dean Freeman, like, fighting. Mm. And then, like, the fact that I turned around to get out the shower and the big tattoo, the machines there. In the like in the show with us, it's crazy. And then um, like Antonio Silva, but he wasn't fit. He wasn't. He went near UFC then. But um, yeah, we all refused to get a show with Antonio because there was something on his person that was probably the size of your arm. So it just made us all feel a little bit une yeah. uneasy. Don't, <laughs> um, don't yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it's like you just start questioning your manhood. You, you just look at yourself. No, yeah. <laughs> What have I got to offer? Like, short, short like... and thick does the trick, lad. Short and thick does the trick. <laughs> <laughs> the thing you always just um, yeah, it was weird. And I remember I was some uh, with someone in there was doing this crash, like crash dieting all the time. I just uh, when I'm not in camp because I, I I I I'm against all that get camp. I get it when someone does like you've got eight weeks to get ready for the fight, so they just do nothing but that. I get that, but I used to train all the time because I like training. Yeah. Didn't have to just be playing, I just like training. And like, even Bis Bisping doing it, he only trained for camps, he never trained any extra, he just trained when he came for camps. I think because he had like a lifetime of martial arts, that, that prob probably and that was his job, I understand that, but I just took over. I just I was addicted to grappling at the time. And um, so I was always training. So um, yeah, this kid was like, yeah, after um, after so and so, I'm gonna uh, after this fight, I'll have a uh, three weeks off now. Come back in, uh, I'll just eat loads of fucking Burger King, and then I'll I'll go on this mad keto diet. I was like, you've got to stop the cash coursing, uh, um, cash dieting. I said because you're, um, I said your skin will fucking all fill out when you've got a belly, and then come back in, and your skin won't catch up. I said, I and this I, this was no shit, no way of a lie. I said you'll end up with a belly flap like Rico Rodriguez. This what I said to him, and then and then Rico Rodriguez just popped his head down and said, "Who just said my name?" I was like, I can't believe me. He was like, "He just turned up that day." I was like, "Oh, that was me. I heard you were coming." It was like, "Oh, it was so weird." It's like, but that's that, mostly it was like that all the time. It's mad because I remember when I seen that he, he fight Robbie Lawler, and then within like a month he was he, he in our Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, well, he came up when um like well, uh, rampage and stuff came up. Yeah, yeah. Thing, yo, the, um, yeah. <laughs> Heavy. Yeah. I don't think he ever smiled in real life either, you know. That's he. I don't think he smiled. But the, the um, big thing with that fight was that apparently he was like rinsing Robbie Lawler, calling them shit, and then just got his fucking eyebrow took off, and it was like yeah. one of the biggest sorts of revenge acts. I don't know how true it is, but... Yeah, yeah just... Um, yeah, it, it, it's a weird vibe. Um, I mean, I don't like... I know people have a strange aversion to stuff that happens in training, but we met a, a an absolute tool who came over with a rampage called Lunchbox. <laughs> That's his nickname, Lunchbox. I'd love him to listen to this. He was just like, he came in bouncing around, dead lively. Hey, English guys, we're going to, uh, us Yanks going to show you. And he was saying Yank is a piss take, because that's what, yeah. like, because he doesn't you know I mean don't call themselves that and he's like we're going to show you how to wrestle how to grapple how to do all this real UFC shit he's like sounds and then there's another Brazilian coach who came over with um, Rampage and he was speaking to Mario Mario was like mumbling something but they were not saying and he, he went ah, and he both laughed and then he said hey, lunchbox roll with Dave <laughs> so I got on with him. and I literally tapped him about 30 times in 3 minutes I know it sounds a lot but it was like it was around about that. I'd say twenty-eight. Then it was like ridiculous, and he 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 went a little bit quieter after that. Yeah, 
Yeah, mate. There's not ways of walking in with an ego like that's it's just yeah. asking for trouble, lads. Why do people do it? Like I had um, I had a fantastic um, pure freestyle wrestling. Um, like um, about I don't know about twenty minutes of wrestling with Gerald Gerald Harris, and he was a Division One wrestler in America, and he was just it was just lovely adulation after it. Like he was just like man, fucking, I didn't know people over here knew how to wrestle. I was like, I've been wrestling since I was eleven. Like, <laughs> that's what I mean, yeah. I've got I wrestled in the snake pit, and I mean we had a proper. It was like an underbelly of wrestling in this country, but we had. We had top end wrestlers. People don't even realise in 1993, uh, Roy Woods from the Snake Pit took a team over to Japan to show the catch of Lancashire, and I was like, that was like my thing. I wanted to do it was like, like 93. I was 13, so I was like, that was I was looking up to that. Going, that's oh, I'd love to do that. And like me wrestling hero Joey Guyler, who still lives in Kirby, strongest man I've ever met. Mm. Um, he, he had two bouts over there as well. I was like, it's fucking excellent. People don't know about the stuff that existed before MMA. And I was a big part of all of this weirdness. You know what I mean? Like Paul Hoon and Joey Gyler went over to Japan to fight Pancrease originally. <clears throat> and mm. ended up walking into a pro wrestling version of it. <laughs> and they were like, <laughs> just didn't understand it. Well, it, it, it that was a, that's probably a story for another time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you got to be, we had a, a kid coming into our gym who was training out of Kabon. And he just come in because he was local there. Adam Hodgson. I don't know if you've seen him round. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was like ranked like second welterweight in the country, mate. And because mm. he was at welterweight, I just found myself that technically insufficient in comparison to him. I just laid on mm. him as much as I could just to try and control him. Because if, <laughs> if he was anywhere near my weight, I would, like you said, I would have got tapped 30 times by him. He was just mm. that good, lad. That good. Unbelievable. Mm. There is oh, a massive scene there. Yeah. They should um, say that though with grappling. I mean, if the big edge should take longer, <laughs> I've always said that because one of my, um, like when I've done that world championship in 2011, I was only, uh, I weighed in 80 and I, like it was two days later that we competed and I was 85 key when we competed, and, but I won the open weight as well and the biggest fella I beat in there was some Mexican fella. Because it was a weird world championship because you could wear your gi, you could wear your wrestling boots, singlet. There was right Russian, there was like uh, two Russians in as well, full What's singlet wrestling. No, just wrestlers, freestyle wrestlers. Freestyle, yeah. Yeah, and then uh, the Mexican, I think he's on. I don't think he's on Brazilian Jiu Jitsu though. His gi was a bit like tin. <clears throat> but um, I just, it's mad being like, it's like no gi, but like. It's, it's, what they call no gi, just grappling because it was a proper world championship. You can wear what you want, but to, yeah, as this advantage if you wear a gi against one who's not in a gi, because I actually choked him with it. <laughs> and it, I'm, I'm convinced that this day he's shit in his pants, <laughs> but yeah, awesome. sure, yeah, he's a, a fucking very good kid. Um, yeah, boss. Well, uh, I'll move off that a bit and I'll come back to that in a minute because. I was just looking at the website on the Echo about a year or two ago, 2018, yeah. because I looked it up today. And it's oh, your, your I will look for the best. Yeah. yeah. So, for anybody who doesn't like know... China. Let's just address the photo first. I look like I've been out on a bender, which I don't do. <laughs> right, six o'clock in the morning. Right, go ahead, carry on. Carry on, I'll hey, get no, on this. Now. I just like it. That that's what pisses you off. It does. <laughs> like, I don't like the it's picture. That, that no, you I know, <laughs> Yeah. So, well, I'll tell you what, I'll start it by saying the reason I'm bringing it up is because the Liverpool Echoes are ragging my my opinion. And no, I, feel it is. Like, I feel like 100%. they take what they want to hear and then just make it fit what they want to write. And especially now oh, it's, been, yeah. it's a Liverpool paper wrote in Manchester now. I think it's probably yeah. even worse for that. But yeah. Con Conor McGregor was in Liverpool anyway. Yeah. And you would have the mindset, according to the paper, that yeah. his whole sort of demeanour is quite toxic. And miss yeah. people who are getting into the sport now for the wrong reasons because they want to walk around with their Gucci mink or whatever it is, and that you felt yeah. like that was it. And they quoted you in saying, I've wrote it down here. I said to my colleague, yeah. This is when you're working on the door, so you're working on the door in Matthew Street or something, is it? I was on the cavern, yeah. The cavern, yeah. Um, mm. So you said to your colleague, If Conor McGregor walked past, I'd go up to him and ask him for a fight there and then. And I mean it, I think I'd have just chinned them. <laughs> and then I could see <laughs> where they've talked. Now, I know yeah. Dave, so I know for a fact he'd have probably had a lot more to say. And by the, the amount he speaks on this podcast, you can guess that wasn't yeah. just what Dave had to say. But they've talked that little snapshot 
and then made you look a bit daft by then saying, well, you're saying yeah. he's toxic because the way he is, but your response is to chin him. Give, yeah. you, give you some time to explain yourself, lad, or, or did you just no, want to chin him? No, I love it, I love it, I love it. No, but again, it's, it's I'm not talking about tox, uh, toxic nature as in violence, because violence absolutely gets a bad rap, because there's sometimes positive violence, and if there's someone who is toxic, if they get fucking battered and take out the limelight, that's positive violence. That's okay. But uh, but by the way, that, that was a misquote, what he said. It was literally, I was talking to Paddy on the door, and this was a candid bit of conversation after the article part had finished. Because he was, um, yeah, here's what it was. I, I contacted someone because I was doing a show, a pancreas show. The open hands, open weight kicks, full on grappling, rope breaks, old school like MMA stuff in Japan. I was doing a show. Now I was going to bring in the open weight stuff because the weight cut, and there was a lot of people doing silly weight cuts. I mean, it was a few months before my first show. Dad and Till was like blind, wasn't he? Like yeah. he went blind doing a weight cut and that. And I just, it's just, it's madness to me. I get it, get it where people like watch a Rocky movie and, and then go, ah, oh, it's, it's about heart. It's, it's, you don't need heart. It's, there's weight cutting science. If you want to listen, people want to wake up, go and see Paul Bentley. He's a master at it. He does like no sort of cuts and he's never failed anyone doing a weight cut. He's, he's shit off at it. Um, the science behind it doesn't have to be like that. That doesn't have to be the Rocky bit. As soon as I went blind, I go, nah, I'm out. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, so it's just. Um, I was taking that out and also I was bringing a bit of like the traditional martial arts element back the way Japan is because they're very quiet. The crowds, I don't know why crowds wouldn't be cr quiet, but yeah. the shaking hands or bowing beforehand and no trash talking each other. Just treat each other as martial artists, you know what I mean? Just be respectful. You don't have to be start skipping each other's mars and birds and that. It's just, it's it's absolutely pointless. It's a dog's trick, to be honest. So I hate all that about MMA. And I was teaching in a gym as well. And there's this kid doing a stupid walk. I was like, what are you doing? Like, he, he answered me back and then doing a stupid walk. And it's what Conor McGregor does. And I just said, Conor McGregor's a wanker. Like, and I, well, he is a wanker, isn't he? So we just went, like, but he's got loads of money. And I said, it doesn't matter how much money someone's got. They can't change the genetics. He's the, the genetic wanker and he's always going to be that way. And it was, um, yeah, so, yeah, back to the, the, with the article, I was doing this show. So um, he says, we need a story, though. We need a story, or I can't sell it to me peers. I went, well, that's a story. He said, um, Scouse lad, doing a traditional martial arts show to get away from the negativity of MMA. He went, I don't understand the negativity part. He said, and he even said to me, he said, like Paddy the Paddy. Now, at the time, it was, I was okay with Paddy. Um, so I said to him, oh, no, so we don't throw our own under the bus. I said, but the main person they all copy off, Conor McGregor, said he's the cause of it. And um, so anyway, he went, so, oh, yeah, so, so I want to stay away from that. I said, because there's kids, kids look up to that. And it, it, it's fucking dog shit. It's, it's child abuse if you let a kid fucking emulate a wanker like that. So anyway, um, we're talking about the show and he's finished the article. He's like, oh, I've got enough there. So make a story. He said, focus on the story. Because he kept saying to me, we need a story. So focus on the, 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 the fact that you can go into the science, that you can study it yourself, the science of how dangerous weight cuts are. Now, we're staying away from that. And we're bringing in traditional elements of certain martial arts. That's why, da that's why Damon Wood fought on it, traditional kar uh, karate mm. practitioner. And um, he was like the, he was the, the main event on it as well. It was great. Fought a proper catch wrestler as well. And it yeah. looked like a spectacle. Do you know what I mean? It looks... Because it's actually on YouTube if you ever want to watch it, Jigoku. Um, so it just looks great. Someone in a karate gi fighting like a cat wrestler in a single, like old school yeah. MMA. It was, it was great. Um, two giants as well. So that was it. And when we finished, he was like, Do you want another coffee, Dave? I'm enjoying this. So I went to the so they were buying. I had another coffee. And he went, It just said to me, just totally candid. Have you ever met that Conor McGregor? I went, no, I said, if I'd met him, though, I said, I couldn't even be nice to him, mate. It's just the stuff he's done. I said, I'd have to give him a slap. And that's what I said, a slap. I said, I would. It's just, I've always been that way in nature. I've never been like mm -hmm. one of them timid people. Who like, and again, I'm not one of them people who says, I'll do this and that and then don't. I'm not one of them people. I'm just not. It's like, if I move in, if I move somewhere and we've got like a terrible neighbour, the terrible neighbour's not going to be a terrible neighbour much longer. I've yeah. just never been one. I've never been a standby, you know what I mean? And um, it was, oh, um, oh, right. And that's all he said to me. That's all he said to me. I said, oh, no, I said about it. That was it. I said, um, 
Oh no, I said I was working on the cavern one night when he was actually in town. So when he was just on one, like on a mad bender or something, he was. And I said, I said, um, I said to me mate, I said if he walks past the head, old pads, can you let me off the door so I can give him a, give him a slap? And that's all I said. That's all I said to him. And it, we we were done with the interview part, and then he's just he went um. He phoned me as well. He said, listen, I've finished it. Got to meet the deadline. I can't read it out to you. I'm happy. Are you happy to go with this? I said, yeah, just stick to the focus. And blah, 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 blah. I went, yeah, right. And then just that fucking dog shit article came out. And then, that's what I'm saying. This this is karma, this. I didn't throw fucking Paddy under the bus. And then he said something about me on. Like, not like direct. Because mm. he's not like... Like, I'd say something direct to someone. I didn't say like direct. Like, proper shitbaggy comment. Um, so I sent him a message on fucking Facebook, like just like a private thing, just like just there. Uh, and he's ready. And it also ended with like, if you ever want to learn to fight, there's my phone number. But he he'd never said anything about it. But it is true colours have been shown recently anyway. So fuck him. Yeah. Yeah. I've just I got a lot. There's a some people like there's loads of people like people like loads of backlash. Some shit pictures talking about a pancreas show, and I've got a. Um, and the, the fella day came at like six o'clock in the morning. I was about to do a private in KC Fight Base. And also, yeah, he put down I was the owner of KC Fight Base and that. It's not my team. I was just doing pizza. Wasn't it? That was it, madness. And like um he just they just don't listen, mate. They just do on a story and he just don't listen to you. And he went, put them gloves on. I was like, why? I was like, just uh, just for a photo and that I said, yeah, and sound, put these gloves on that was sitting there. It's probably some kids' gloves. I was like, and like you seen bags under my eyes, I hate them pictures and like ah, oh, just shit. It was just oh, the whole thing was a joke. And um the one, the one he, thing I took from it though, Dane, was yeah, I read it and I was like, that does sound like Dave because he does say stuff like I'm gonna go slap him or them, but he usually yeah. gives you the reason. Or yeah. and that just sounded like a very short quote, and then there was the yeah. picture of you looking like that. Usually, yeah. if you had something to say like that, there would have been a video underneath of you just pointing or something. I just felt like, yeah. as soon as I seen it, I've not spoken to you since I've seen that. Yeah. And I just thought, that's a load of shit, that. And I even seen people yeah. commenting who knew you underneath yeah. saying, Dave probably said something like that, but I don't think he said that. Yeah. That's you know what, what they I mean? do again, chin. It's like chin. I don't, ever, I don't really say chin someone. And it is a slap. <laughs> it's a slap. Usually if someone deserves a slap, I usually give them a slap. Do you know what I mean? I mean, that's what another thing. Loads of that's what loads of people do. Like they like a lot, see some of the comments about certain things just show me some true colours of some people. Like like you go, yeah, like saying he's he's saying he's um like he's a toxic character, but he, but yeah, he's he's gonna uh, stop him with violence. But that itself is there's nothing wrong with that. It's like <laughs> so I mean, there's nothing wrong with being violent towards a fucking dickhead. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I've got nothing against. That's another thing. As soon as you say violence, now it's like in um, it's like I was explaining to me to me lad who was thirteen after like um, so he, I was coming out of a wrestling show. I done a little guest spot on it, and um, there was a it was it was a Tesco on um, what is it? It's at the back of the Grand Central. Big Polish yeah, yeah. fellas like true. The security guard on the floor, little kid, with, like a young lad with like glasses on, just lashed them, and like he was really upset. And he's just, he's obviously robbed something. He's ran up the shop, and I've double legged him, put him in a commode, and that, and I just <laughs> the, the stuff I was saying to him, like because I thought he was going for it. I said, "Don't move," like just tell him not to move, or I'll snap his shoulder, and that. And it was like, ah, Ben was like watching it, me little lad, like he was just like just watching it. I was like, so he was all right. He went, yeah, yeah, but he's kind of loving it. It's like loving it. But I was explaining to so I had a conversation with him about violence. I went, look, I said, people just say violence and just think it, it's, it's instantly bad. I said, but it's not. I've got a really strong outlook with violence. And it's it's like, it's it's good men who are experts in violence who are going to keep this world safe. Do you know what I mean? And I think that the world needs more than that. It's just, yeah. um, who needs it? Listen, it's like, we're going into a world now where you just get written off for violence. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's trying to wants to get the phone out, video you instead. Like, what the fuck does that do to anyone? Or people want to just, you know, they want to block you or unfriend you on Facebook. That's as bad as it gets now. I hate you know, all that shit. I absolutely you know what? No, I, I'm, I'm kind of worried about it because I've got the four-year-old and the, uh, just coming up to two-year-old now. They're both lads. And like, I've, I've always said to them going into school and that, if I get mm -hmm. called in because someone's bullying you, 
I'm just going to say, well, you need to sort that out. You need to slap them. I'm going to have you in a gym doing this, that, and the other. If I find out mm-hmm. you're bullying someone, though, that's when you have to deal with me. And I think with yeah. parents, oh, when you're yeah. talking about that, it's your job as a parent and that. And yeah. I'm not saying, like, everybody who's out there doing all this shit, if you're still there filming and not getting involved and stopping it, you're a wanker. Yeah. And I find out you're yeah. doing it, that's yeah. you again. You're as bad as the bully. And I think it's yeah. down to people to take a bit of responsibility. And the problem is... Yeah. A lot of these parents just, they're, either, they're off doing something else, drugs or drink or whatever, and they're not fucking focusing on their fucking kids. And then the kids mm-hmm. go to school and they're just fucking animals. I, I, ju- I just think now, like, when, when I, my kids go to school, I'm just telling them, it's your, it's your problem, you need to sort it out. You need me to take you down the gym to spar or something so you can sort it out, you, you do it. I it's think just like- should be should be used yeah. sparingly, but there's still a place for it. And I think anybody who says otherwise, like you say, the, the, the heroes of the nation when shit goes wrong. Yeah. No, it's just, it, 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 it's what's needed. It, that's why it, it's like someone does something bad. Like, I um, also find myself in the echo again. Someone um, lovingly. And this is what people do. It's what people do. You see, like, a bit of violence against someone. It's like, um, I remember all these dormant in town grips, some fella, because he kicked. Now, I won't, use the, I won't use the term homeless. I won't use it. Because my definition of that is totally different from most people's. So I, I usually do that when I say homeless. But it was a beggar, so they are beggars. He, he volleyed one, right? Some fella volleyed one right in the face going into the um, into the rubber sole. And all the women grabs him and these women were going, you absolute dog. You're, I'm going to get you nicked. You're going to the echo. Go video on him. Kicking him, homeless fella. And everyone's... All what they've all done was just made presumptions. They all made some The dormant was strangling them and that. The young lads, the young, uh, the fellows with the young lads was about 18. It's like crying, going, oh, like, please get off him. Because it was his dad. We found out, I found out from a police officer. See, everyone made him the, the villain for vo- volleying him in the face. We found out earlier. And I've got a police uh, police um, officer friend from training. I won't uh, mention his name on here. He's a very good fella. He's about seven foot. If anyone knows him, you'll know him from that if they do know him. Now, he showed me the video from round the back, some fella that put a camera because they all hang around outside the shop and it had audio on it. And earlier on, he had asked the fella for money while he's with his lad. Asked the fella for money. He went, sorry, mate, got not I've only got a five minutes. I'll have that then. He, and he called, he went, cheeky cunt. And he went, uh, he went, give us this, I'm with me fucking mate. And he pulled it, he said, I'm with me mates or something like that. But he pulled out the aisle syringe, he went, I'll stab you and give you AIDS. And he just grabbed his kid oh. and ran away with him. But then when he seen him 10 minutes later sitting outside, he just reacted and booted him in the face, and rightly so. But it's just, um, that's what I'm saying. It's like people want to, they see violence, they instantly say it's wrong. And then, um, they don't even, they don't look about it, they don't check the connotations or what motivates it. That's why I'm like, like some poor fella killed himself in in, in Manchester after he'd done like, it was a sh- stupid little kick on this beggar's, beggar who's lying down in his back and everyone was online going, let's make him famous and all that. And I was like, don't jump on the bomb wagon. I said, you don't know what he's done. Found out the fella was sitting outside his work for six months, harassing him, spitting at him and that. He wouldn't do anything back. The fella had a full, found out the fella had a full like, um, a full like school, uh, his whole school time. He was a bu- he was like a chubby kid. I was getting bullied and that. And then he's getting in work. As soon as he told you someone in the back, um, like that, everyone's like, make him famous, make him famous. And then he, he couldn't take the pressure and would top of himself. This is what people got to watch with this camera shit now. They need to just, um, yeah, I hate it. Even like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of all police, but I'm not the biggest fan of all milkman. I'm not the biggest fan of all postmen. It's because it's, 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 it's an individual thing. It's not a job thing. And... It's like even just busy, he's now doing the job. It's getting videoed and people go, just for no reason. If they just ask for your ID, if you do, just give your ID and then fuck off. Yeah. If you've done that wrong, no. Do you know my, I know my rights and I've been on fucking Google and it just knocks me sick. The whole culture now knocks me sick. So I'm made up during the lockdown. I didn't get to see anyone. <laughs> yeah. The thing with the police for me is you can yeah. slag them off all you want, but yeah. when someone reaches your daughter, you're on the phone to them. You got that's the thing, yeah. And if that happens, phone Uncle Dave because Dave will get hands on with that rapist <laughs> because Dave's all for positive violence. It's literally, listen, violence is the only thing that both geniuses and idiots understand in equal measure. That's what I always say. And I'm stuck by that. <laughs> yeah. It's advice, mate. It's advice. Yeah. Well, um, 
Go on, we'll, we'll move on from that and we'll conclude that yeah, the end a gang of wankers, mate. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's an official quote for them. But um, yeah. <laughs> go on, so just for the, the MMA fans watching, the Ultimate Fighter experience, you were on Bisping and Hendo yeah. season nine. Yeah. I mean, what was that like? You had Ross Pearson and that on your team, mate. You had one of the, one of the best mm -hmm. seasons of the lot. I mean, you... At the, the class, oh, I was all, all, the pool. Yeah, oh, I loved it. That was, that was probably my highlights. But it's like it's um, it was very uh, the way the I mean, you could tell from the thing uh, from the show there weren't much banter between because we all had a meeting. We all had a meeting. I don't know if they showed that on 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 this the show, but we all had a meeting and um, about listen, don't be doing this, don't be doing that. I think they were made up because, like, Americans tend to, just all tend to fuck about, but we just all sat down because at the end of the day, um, you couldn't shock uh, my, uh, Stapes because he just, uh, he'd be in a squad if he is. He must have yeah. seen some serious shit in, in the digs and that. So he was just like, listen, we're not doing this, not doing that. Don't come in anyone's food. Don't piss in anyone's bed. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Everyone's on sound. And a few times, the, um, a few times, like, when he got out of hand as well. There's like footage they didn't show where we all just surround them. And listen, don't start all that. We'll just fuck you in the house. And they were like, oh, yeah, no, 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 just the jokes out. But they like, don't show it. They don't show like loads of stuff. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't a heavy joke uh, on Dean Amersinger that they, would, they, would, they wouldn't show. It's not even in the extras. But um, I'll message you privately about that. It's quite funny. Uh, I think I've seen it. Is it, somewhat, is it like uh, made them look like something? Yes. I've seen it on one of your interviews. But oh, yeah. sound it. I just goes to well. Yeah, you, you can you can comment that. I'm trying to move this camera away because I've got a light there, so it, so it's not too dark. And but I don't want to expose the um the thing in the ceiling. Yeah. So um no, it was spot on. I mean, I met like amazing people there. Like like Jeff Lawson was big time because at the, when I went in, to be honest, if I went in to the house a year earlier. Or a year later, it would have been perfect for me. I was meant to be in court over two kids with two different women at the same time. And um, I had the only reason I agreed to do it because I needed money for court. That was the reason I'd done it because, like, my mind weren't really on fighting at the time. But it wasn't on uh, fighting for a few years. I just wanted to be a top grapple at the time. It just, I seen how the inner workings were, and it just it, it didn't really, weren't really doing it for me. But I just, <laughs> Auntie McGann just said, dude, asked me to do the um, uh, the uh, trial for it. And he went, there's 1,500 people, you won't get in. So I went sound. And I was with my hair all fucking blue and that. I just thought, oh, I'll just make a show of myself. But um, I obviously didn't. But uh, And I got in. But, yeah, it's like... Um, hook, yeah. You, what, you, yeah? you stopped that fella with the heel hook in about yeah. a minute, didn't you? Do you know what? To be honest, in hindsight, I'd wish fucking James Bateman had got a... It fought someone and got through because he wanted it, mate. He wanted it, and that's what I felt bad about. I was like, I was just like, I was like phoning it in at the time, as they say. Do you know what I mean? I was just like, oh, I had fucking no skin on my right foot in that fight. I'd got a blister on my foot on the Wednesday. I'd cut it off. I couldn't shoot or not, and so I couldn't even stand there and strike. I just felt like a bag of shit, and then I fumbled him to the ground. And it was like. I was phoning it in, getting a getting a heel hook. That's like the that's like the most standard. And people were raving about it, but I was like, that's like me me bullshit standard. One I haven't tapped yet in an MMA fight. I'll just yes, I'll just go to that because I know I'll get a tap. But uh, yeah, it's just because deep ones in. He was really nice after it. He proper um, gave me a hug and went, "You go and win it now, man." I was like, sound. I was like, and but I did get a, I got a little buzz about being there. Like I said, I would have enjoyed it the year before or the year after. But I got I got a buzz when he was giving out the t-shirts. I was like, yeah, this is this is soundness. But um yeah, the way it runs, the inner workings is not all fucking glamorous and showbiz and all that. It's just it's not. So any people aspiring to be on it, don't go <laughs> don't go on it. But it was worth it for like meeting people. Every one of the English lads I got on with, every single one of them. The Yanks, they weren't a bit, I mean, the Jason Dent, he was only dead, he was quiet. But he's like really good. One of the lads I thought I was getting on with proper fucking slated me in an interview after it. <laughs> but again, you don't know if they like, the meant you don't know if the the, the the told to do that, you just don't know. But um and uh, Jason Pierce, the, the the American I was gonna fight, he would have actually been the hardest opponent from the American side. Because yeah. he was he was eleven and oh in Michigan. Which is they're all top wrestlers over there, and he was a proper cardio machine that but 
it was lucky, like, he got stuff and I got stuff at the same time. Um, his was very fucking bad and he didn't make it. They made him out. The worst, the worst bit of editing that is they made Jason Pierce, who basically was the gaffer of all them. And he made him out to be like a shitbag. And he was 32 at the time. I was only 28. And he had a, he had a, a building company at the time. And he heard, I haven't heard from him, but he heard a rumour that after that show, because of how they portrayed him, no one used his company anymore. What? That's how sad and fickle people are. I hope it's not true. I hope he's fucking living it up in the because he's a boss. He's a boss guy. But yeah, it's just it's the how serious people take a semi-reality TV show is unreal. Yeah, fucking wankers, man. But mm -hmm. uh, it's mad the way you say that because I had Ross Poynton do one of the first ones with us, and obviously he done the I think it was Ultimate Fight yeah, two one. or three. And yeah. He, he just said the whole thing was like proper Hollywood for his, but it was earlier yeah. on, wasn't it? Yeah. Didn't he used to do like games and all that, like sports and stuff in the early ones? They used to go out like, I remember like uh, in the first one, like Chuck Liddell and Randy Couture getting carries and chairs on the beach and all that, like they were having races. Yeah, it yeah. It was like a, a Broken Skull Ranch, wasn't it? It was like no Steve Austin show. It was like a bit like that. <clears throat> well, no, the yeah, it was just when we were there, when nine series in. I just think it's like um, it was weird as well because the house because they are as soon as we walked in the house I was the first to walk in as well if you ever watch it back I was the first to walk in because I've, I've got no issue with like like this like people and intimidation stuff because like I said I'm probably 500 no in the street <laughs> it just it doesn't bother me in that and um, so um just got a notification. So I just, uh, sounds, I was walking and they were all bevy and I was teetotal at the time. And uh, so I was the boring one really at the time. And um, yeah, it was just like, we noticed it. when we all went outside, everyone was getting on. It was just mellow. Everyone was having a drink. I mean, one of them was trying to be loud and was going, yeah, let's fucking take the volume down a bit. So it's not to be like that. And uh, But the pool, it was a fella's house. And what they do, they, they, what they told us, uh, they, they totally remodel the house on the inside and then put it back to exactly the way it was when the season's finished, which is mad. But in the pool, still in the pool, was bottles from the season before. And, and like, even when... They haven't when, used like, the house since. I don't think, yeah, or they haven't used the pool since. But um, it was weird. And um, saying that, I could suck one of them bottles and fucking sold on eBay. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, when you went in the water as well... I don't think the filter being on, like, it was like, the water was sweet, it was like, we'd been pouring drinks and that in the fucking pool. It tastes like a bit sweet, it was horrible. It was just, um, yeah, it was just, like, that's what I'm saying, it wasn't very, it wasn't very Hollywood in that way. And then when you, you went to the back rooms to get interviewed and stuff, like, you were just stepping over wires and went through this, like, little pin, like, fake partition wall and the time the guy just what to say and all that, it's just, it was all very, um, it's all very fake. I even made a joke on. I made a a, a joke on one, and that the editor short, and then some fat yank who done YouTube videos who reviewed it finished the joke for me and thought it was his joke. So <laughs> he, 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 got, he, he got absolutely leathered. That's I thought it was a cheeky fat sad bastard who lives in his mother's ma his mother's basement. He's one of them type. But yeah. it was um, yeah, so just yeah. It just, I mean, it might have been, it might have been Hollywood the first time. I mean, we had a phone. You could phone for any food you wanted or anything you wanted. And I was taking the piss on it. I was like, let's see what type of food I can get. So I said, can I get low carb wraps? Because I, I haven't even met bread for about six months. Low carb wraps. Low carb, high protein wraps. Low carb, high protein wraps were there the next day. I was like, okay. Um, no carb, high protein donuts. They, they were there the next day. It was mad. It was yeah. just like a little game because we couldn't really eat shit. So it was a bit of a, a bit of a, it was a bit of a tease because you've got this phone, all the anything you want, root beers, anything. But you've got, you've got to watch your weight while you're there. So yeah, so <clears throat> that was the that was probably the only Hollywood thing anything we needed, like wrestling boots. I mean, we all needed wrestling boots. As soon as I got a pair of wrestling boots, everyone went, eh, I need wrestling boots. <laughs> and to be honest, if I'd put wrestling boots on early, check this out. If I'd put wrestling boots on earlier, I wouldn't have got staff. That 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 uh, open wound on my right foot, 
what yeah. I mentioned in the first fight. That's what we got staff from because we trained in the gym a week prior. He let us in early because we were stuck in a hotel in England for a few days, almost a week. Then he brought us over to Las Vegas and kept us in a room for a week. So he let us out to train. And we went to the, the, the um, again, very unglamorous. We went to the uh, training, uh, the, the UFC gym, um, which is not, not great not, by any means. not that great. No, and it's um, not the one then. And the mats had like, like, a, like it was sticky and had a hairy, it was a bit hairy as well. So it's definitely then, it was definitely then when we were training there, when we thought we were still raw. Um, we definitely, I definitely, definitely, everyone caught the infections in there because all the Americans were getting let in. And that uh, four people got staff. That Frank Lester who fought, he got staff. Mm. Uh, I think Jason Zent got it, and Jason Pierce and myself. But then they got over it within, a, I think it was a week. They only had it on the skin. But me and Jason had it like deep in our leg. It was like running wild in our bloodstream. <laughs> All of all that, lads. But but the it, way I've never been so sick in my life. It's like having it's like having ten flus at once. It was just oh, it was just yeah. bad. Oh, it was just, it. Yeah. It was just I mean, Brian Craig has had it a few times, but just on the skin. But um, when you get it, goes deep. And he starts talking to you. Like, I was going to this uh, dermatologist every two days to get it cut open and drained. Yeah. Um, oh, what was his name? He was just such a funny character. He wore, like, the like them Adidas tracksuits, like, how the dude wears my car. And he'd come yeah. in, like, yeah. oh, what was his name? I have to try and remember his name. He was just cool. He was like, have you noticed something, my my friend? I went, what? He went, all my nurses are smoking hot. I went, <laughs> yeah. He says, but they're all over 40. I said, yeah, so what's your secret? His name, he was another Jason. So, Jason Michaels? Yes! Dermatologist, check him out. Um, <laughs> and he said, uh, because I get all ex-strippers. I put them through medical school and they come and work for me. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> See, Vegas, mate. That's he Vegas, was the biggest man. star of season nine. Yeah, he was boss. And um, yeah, he was saying, but they got to a point where they said, listen, if this staff goes past your knee, goes into your thigh, they start talking about possibility of amputation. Then it's like, fuck me. And he told Jason Pierce like a week earlier, a week earlier than me, he said, listen, if that goes into your, your, your thigh, you're going to, you've got to think about amputation. Because it goes into your torso, you're fucking, you're more than dead. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, That's yeah, heavy, that, that mate. Wasn't, yeah, that wasn't the best thing to be thinking about. I mean, I weren't even thinking about it, to be honest. How, it just, how early did you get it in the actual uh, series? It, oh, fuck. Well, we trained. I was, oh, right, there's, I think, I don't know if it's episode 11, there's, there's an episode where they give they do me a highlight reel <laughs> where I'm like picking people up and slamming them and and everyone's giving me compliments. It's, it was nice, like do you know what I mean? Um yeah. heavy, really heavy compliments by all these top lads. I was like when I watched it, it was like I got a bit emotional. I thought it was it was nice, do you know what I mean? But um yeah, that was during like the, the first few weeks while we were there. Cause they three trained before all the fights start they start talking about fights. I think it was about a month and in the second month you start having the fights. I don't know if that's correct, because I'm a bit hazy on the um the amount of time, but I think that's round about it. But I was just saying I was on fire, felt amazing, and then it just went, Whoa. It's like fucking like I'd contracted AIDS. <laughs> so it was like a bit bad. It was oh, just love. bad. Yeah, it was just um yeah, just funny. Just like having looked bad, for, I couldn't even eat as well. It's like sometimes I could, and they made it again. Here's another thing you probably mentioned. They made a bigger issue out of the fucking gum shield thing than the shield, because <laughs> um, what it might me, me, the gum shield thing as well. It was um, I used to spar when I sparred with Mike. I literally in the third round, I start walking. But what it is, I used to train dry. That was my mistake. I used yeah. to train dry. I never never used to drink while I was training. I'd just never done it. I just never thought about it. So, um, yeah, so, and that, that was, literally, that was the issue. So, I, get around, I always get around here to start balking. But then when the staff got into me, I, it just got dead. It just got fucking well worse. So, my gum shields down there. But I couldn't even eat some days. So like, it was, I was, like, balking when I was eating. So, when I was putting it in, um, it was just bad. It was bad. It was just like an alien creature in my mouth. But then we made a joke about the hypnotist, and I did like they show a little bit of the funny bit, but like none of that was serious. I mean, the woman who was doing it was serious, but oh, that, that, I, I was rewatching that like about fucking six months ago. 
that damn weird. I just watch fucking shit like Ultimate really, Fighter that, back yeah. catalogue and stuff like that. And they've yeah. got you lying on the fucking bed going, I, I am okay. I can have my gum shield in my mouth and I am going to win. I am positive. <laughs> and you're just lying there. And I've never seen you so calm and not speaking oh, that much in no, all my life, lad. <laughs> oh, no, it's lovely because literally, it's like, they, they did pull a few little mad tricks because the Uf, USA bed sheets, right? Well, like, just felt dead soft like them jersey sheets you get in Asda during the winter and fuck, they're lovely. <laughs> um, they were like them nice and soft and ours were like, when you get brand new ones out of the bag and they're dead rough. Yeah. And um, I think, I don't know if it was Jeff Lawson found out, but also our, our, like, our shorts were thicker and heavier. I mean, it makes no difference. It doesn't matter if I've got, I'm a stone heavier myself. It makes no difference to me. But it was like little things like that. It was like little shitty little things like that. Like our shorts. Because if, if anyone's like, if a collector, I'll ask me mate, um, Logan, he, he's got all the official stuff from all the seasons. And I'll, I'll show you what I'll, I'll like. I'll get them. I'll met, weigh them one day for you. It's like the, the the American ones were like a third weight of our, our shorts, it's like thinner stuff, and ours were like quite thick. Even the ones you buy, um, the, the the shorts you buy in the shops and all that, like the replicas of them, the the the, the sound, but they're not mm. like they're not like the ones we've got, but the ones we had. It was like loads of little, just loads of little shitty. Yeah, little things like that. We kept noticing, and then it was like, like the yeah, the training times and stuff. It was like they were trying to be funky. I mean, they made tried to make a story out of it on on thing, but they were trying to um, like thinking we like we get less sleep and that, but it didn't bother us. We were like we were like clockwork there. We were in bed yeah. early and that just like, but yeah. Oh, we like the UK team look like they had more a bit about a bit about them, like you know what I mean. Yeah. You could tell if there was anyone going to do anything and get, get it put on them, it was going to be the UK team putting it on them. Yeah. It just, I mean, the, the other thing I noticed was um, whenever there was, like, people having a laugh on that, I mean, Ross Pearson looked like he was pissing himself when you were dressed up in the fucking some weird dominatrix <laughs> luchador outfit, lad. Yeah. Oh, he loved it. He absolutely loved it. He was boss, he was boss mate. There was, like, um, have you ever watched the extras as well? I don't know if it's on it. They were all, like... We got these marker pens for the top, and he was signing the tops. Now, this goes to show the frame of mind I was in at the time, because I was just thinking, wonder when I'm, this is over, I'm getting this money and going. And I, it was just in my head, to be honest as well, not like I, not egotistical, but just when we looked at all the Yanks, I thought, I'm fighting the English fell in the final, therefore, because mm. I knew when Jason was out, because he was sick before me, man. His, that, his staff was well worse than mine. Um, and mine was bad. And it was just like... And, and this is like no disrespect to them now because they've all made good names for them. Well, most of them have. I know Frank has. But um, they got all the cream of the crop from England at the time. And a few little a few little uh, wild cards. I think like Nick Hope Sipchak was at the time was a bit of a wild card. I think because he, he, he had a vibrant personality, like co Cockney wide boy that they, like, they, they, yeah. they wanted something like that. Because he was like brand new to it at the time. Um, and even the guy he beat to come into it was like, um, like that, I think that was that to fill that slot, but that's what we were at the time. But then with America, they can't like scrape the barrel a little bit, do you know what I mean? That's what they've done. So I just thought, oh my god, these are gonna go we're absolutely gonna go through all these. So I just thought of being the fine. I didn't think I was gonna get sick, like, but um, and it, it would have been quite a straightforward, um, it would have been quite straightforward in any other in, in an alternate universe where I didn't get sick, but um. Yeah, go ahead. What was the what point was it on then? I just I, I lost myself then. I was just I, I was just going on about like um, I mean the whole team seemed to like when when you were doing your little thing like where you were like messing about with the luchador stuff and that yeah. suplexing people off the diving boards and shit like that. I mean like Ross pointing Ross Pearson seemed to just be like laughing his head off. The whole crew on the English team just seemed to get along. Whereas the Yanks, uh, yeah. there's one scene with one of the Yanks. They, they film him praying while he's in the cage, and I'm just like, yeah. these yous all fucking about doing mad stuff, having a laugh. One one of the English guys gets sausaged and all that, and um, yeah. it, it was just a complete contrast in like personality in the two nations. Like you know what I mean? It was just. Well, I said, yeah. Well, I said that's that. Dimitri, is it Dimitri Johnson? What was his name? Um, 
he was playing the thing. And you see, you don't see these bits because they're very religiously charged, aren't they, as well? And mm. there was a Mexican guy on the camera, who obviously you never seen. Whoever's behind the camera is a Mexican guy who's cool. And I was like, he was talking to like, is any of you guys religious? I went, no, I'm like a staunch anti-theist. I said, just not. I said, anyone can do it. But I even said that. I walked into that, um, Demetrius Johnson. I mean, what are you praying for, man? He said, just help me in, in the fight and all. I said, listen to the shit that's going on in the world. And you're fighting for glory and fucking fame and money. So why the fuck is he going to help you? <laughs> he was just like, man, I'm just, I'm committed. I'm, I'm just a soldier of God. I went, all right, sounds. You're just, not, just absolutely no help for you, my mate. But I like the stuff like that. It could have been more interesting to show. You've seen a bit more of the, um, the dialogue between people. No, like, uh, I guess, the, especially yeah. on stuff like that, obviously start, people start mentioning religion, it goes, to, it goes to bits, but it should get mentioned a lot more. It should get mentioned. I think it is, so but, that's, the, 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 it's one of them, they know in the back catalogue in years to come, whatever being that politically correct, it'll all get fucking pulled. I mean, they yeah. can't tell a fucking pew nowadays. I mean, what no. the fuck's that about? Yeah, but I, hopefully, I, I reckon this will just be, it seems to me like it'll be a fad, or they, but not like an uprising, not one of them. There's going to be an uprising of all these people. It's just like the same people will never change, and it'll never, it'll just never affect them. It'll just piss people off. And when you're angry, I mean, people say, like the way people they say, uh, no to hate and all that. That's another thing. Hate gets a bad rap. But if you hate something enough, it'll motivate you to do something about it. If you hate something negative, or if you hate something that's bad, it's like it's like hating an absolute like hating a pizza. If you hate like and you know where he is, you hate him, you'll do something about it. It'll motivate you. And um yeah, it'll just keep it'll keep like people like me motivated. All this silly culture, all these like uh, I don't want to be using snowflake, all these puddings, these mental puddings, that's what it is. Yeah. They're flaccid, these mentally flaccid people. That's what it is, flaccid. That's the word of the day, flaccid. That's what yeah. It's one of them things, lads, when I'm on here, I just speak like, I mean, you're, what are you, about 40 now? Yeah, 41. Ooh, yeah, so I, in me. I, I'm 38 in a month or two. Yeah. So I just speak like what I do when I was back on the playground back in the day. If I see yeah. something that's a bit, ah, oh, that's gay, that is, that's it. Yeah. And when I'm on this, like, I've just got people watching me saying, you can't say that, Neil, you can't say that. I'm like, well, I'm just being me. I'm calling it how it is. But yeah. they're like, well, people aren't going to watch it because they think that you're, you, you know, non-PC or whatever. No, it's like, not that no, I'm non-PC, no. I just don't think about it like that. Yeah, yeah but it's not, and you, you will get people watching it because not everyone's going like that. There is still strong-minded people, and strong-minded people who can who can argue their, their point, and yeah. not even opinion, they can argue facts, that's the thing. It's just it just doesn't work. What they're trying to make all can it doesn't work with human nature, and human nature will uh, consume it eventually. It'll just they'll just they'll get sick and tired of it. They'll just get sick and tired of it eventually. I mean, it's something for them to go on now, but they get sick and tired of it. They'll all find something else, another fad to move on to, which they always Mate, do. I just use the arguments. If I stop saying that, will you watch it? No, then fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch all the adverts on YouTube and pay me wages, I'll I'll, I'll say whatever the fuck you want, but you're not going to, are you? So fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it is what it is, lads. Got a few yeah. fucking kids. <laughs> but um, so what what are you doing now, anyway, lad? I mean, we, 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 we switch Jimmy in at the minute because, like you said before, you're out of gym bunny. I've, I've known yeah. like uh, you've been in Ame. You uh, you're, you're at mix now, is it? Mix Stanton's. No, 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 I'm in a, I'm in a Volvo in Bootle. I tell you, I, I never went to Mix. Oh, it's just uh, when he went. But, Christians? Yeah. yeah, Christians, yeah. Yeah. Um, not far from, like, well, he used to be in McClark, didn't he? So I'm just in there at the minute. It's just, um, I was going to say, with the, with the gym hopping thing, I've always, what I've done, like I said, after the, after the Ultimate Fighter, though, not through, like, ending personal with me, it's the way people react to stuff. Because to be honest, it's mad how many times in the streets People have come over to me and told me what happened in the Ultimate Fighter. And I go, oh, yeah, I remember you being there. Like, you don't fucking listen to the truth about our stuff. Do you know what I mean? And it is, it's a bit its a bit convoluted, the inner workings and the truth behind stuff. But it's mad that I was there, I experienced it. And then people still don't believe it and then tell me what happened. It's fucking insane. It's proper insanity. And honest God, I remember some... 
kid outside Clinton Cards in town. I say kid, because like probably in his twenties, like like loads of people shaking me hand. Weird, like put me like shaking me hand and that, and then they were putting their hand out first, going, Oh yeah, yeah, sounds felt weird. I'm not, I'm not in swallow that, and they've got hey, oh, Dave, do you want to write that? Dave. And luckily enough, no one had fucking boss cameras on the phone, so they, no one was asking folks, isn't that? And it was a like handshake. And this kid came over and so oh, here's another one. So I put my hand out first. He went, Was you that lad off the ultimate fighter? He went, I went, yeah, he went. Ah, you were shit. <laughs> I went, put his head back and laughed. I left there, kicked him and knocked him on some side, Clinton Cards. But, um, you, yeah, you, that's... you're 100% right there. You were there that night, I fought Beachy, and I had yeah. people tell me, Oh, you know what you did wrong? And I went, what I did wrong was take a fucking title fight against someone who's like fucking 40 and old boxing, 10 times better than me, and fucking, but no one else would fucking fight him. What I did wrong no, was. Exactly. Listen, yeah, what, what I what did wrong was, was I was the on. only one who was fucking soft enough to get in there with him because yeah. no, no one else, about 10 people turned him down for that fight. And I'm, I bet you wouldn't yeah. have fucking got in. So don't tell me what I did fucking wrong. I know it's fuck it's madness. Listen, we've had a good we've had a deep conversation about this many years ago. And how many but listen, just after that, how many people? How many people knew you after that? It was just like because of that, because of that nature, because of that. Uh, the nature of the fight, like no one would take it. Everyone, you thought everyone's, and then you were flying then after that. And then, but it's like, it, yeah, man was the opposite. I mean, I'm saying that I got 50%. I got like, um, I got weirdos throwing me around Blockbuster, uh, which was that's, that's always good. <laughs> but then I got, like, I got people who just like, just like fucking, just totally wrong, just not getting it, saying shit about me. Do you know what I mean? Fucking just it, oh, just madness. I, 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 honest God, it's about four shows I've had to do people in at shows, and two of them are in Newcastle. Funny enough, don't know why, but it was just like um, just saying, like coming over to me, thinking, oh, like as a man saying stuff to me, and listen, sport fighting one thing, but out in the streets, man, that's my fucking, that's my realm. It's like you can't. There's no rules here. You can't say that shit to people like me. Do you know what I mean? You just get fucking hammered. But um, yeah, it's just um, yeah. The reason with the gym thing because of all that, the negative fallback out of people. Do you know what I mean? Or like I just got sick of certain things. I become I lost passion with it, but I was still technically I could still technically I, I could offer something technically. I could still teach people to their way of teaching, and I was basically just going to gyms for three months. Every gym I went to. I'd say, let's have a, a review in three months. So if I don't like it, sound I'm off. Or uh, I'll say, I'm only staying three months. I'll help you build the gym up, and then I'm off. Because the passion wasn't there for years, wasn't there? And, um, but with Hammer, I was there four years. But then uh, Alex um, it offered me some really good dough. And um, I, I just it was like time for a move. Alex Foreman offered me. And I just said, listen... Yeah. And, Alex is he, he he's, he's a businessman. Do you know what I mean? We said every every three months we'll review it, and um, it came up. Funny enough, it was Rob Beach uh, offered me a, a job that didn't, but it didn't end up. So I end up leaving to the job, to all the same, and, and it didn't come to fruition. So um, yeah, I ended up back in the gym. <laughs> but um, but yeah, yeah. Put him in the Hammers one of them, mate. That must have been hard to walk away from because. I've never actually gone and trained in Hammer, but you've got that group of lads there that are just dead tight. And just because of the, the level of ability that they've all got, they're going through and smashing it. And none of them strike me as, if you go in there and tell them something, they're not going to listen to you. They're not going to be big-headed. Sean's got them at a level, in my eyes, from outside looking in, where they're all still ready to learn every day. I, I, Always see that with the lads from there, like they, they're all of a good level and seem to have good personality. Yeah, like. I that it, it is. It's a it that it's mostly is personality. It's not a trained. Um, it's not a trained detail. That that's just it's, it's certain people won't go there. It's like um, yeah, I think it, it just doesn't work. An attitude doesn't work in there. It's just because show me, me, when me and Sean finished, we're just telling stupid fucking jokes now, and we get on really well. Do you know what I mean? And then the lads in there, it's just it's fun. It's it's taking all the ego out of fighting, and I think yeah. it's people people go there and want it to be this. I'm going to dedicate my life to it, and nothing else matters. And and it's mad, and it it's very. I know it's very like that in some gyms, but it's, you can't it's maintain death. that though. You can't wake yeah. up every no, day and having this some do. with the stars attitude. You can't maintain yeah. that. There's got to be a level of humour and fun yeah. that makes 
I mean, you've always got to have that passion there, but you can't just have serious every day. You've got to enjoy it as well. Yeah, well, that, that's this is this is. I think it's a it, there's a serious issue with uh, uh, British fighters. I mean, I'm not leather and styles, but I think for MMA as well, style wise, uh, everyone's focused on tying BJJ, where your foundation should be top level pro boxing and free top level freestyle wrestling as foundation, because I think that's where a lot of the English fellas come unstuck, and that's why I don't seem to have problems with that. Because um, I started boxing when I was seven and I started doing freestyle. So I was a bit lucky, started doing freestyle when I was 11. And I was just lucky growing up in Kirby having them. Um, and um, also it's the attitude, the, the, the seriousness and what it all means and so passionate. Put like a movie, twinge on it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? And then everything on social media is about your fighting. It's not like, for example, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I've got an aversion to, to people who game online. And video themselves doing it, but Bobby Pally videos himself playing games, got on to a fighting. Just put it's just it's showing the human side. I mean, just he enjoys yeah. other stuff, but some people it's only about fighting, and then they're always putting dead serious, like half filled quotes. Another thing I fucking hate half filled quotes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Did you with Tom Hardy with something yeah. Tom Hardy never said? Yeah, by, yeah, it's just, yeah, uh, yeah. just like, or just like something like half felt about. Like the destiny and all that. Like, listen, uh, different, yeah, back in the day when it was gladiation, you had to, f- or you had to fight for your meals. But not now, fighting for sport. I don't, there's no, <laughs> it's like destiny in it. And it's just like, oh, it's all fucking dead serious. <laughs> it's all about yeah. destiny. Like, it's just, it's, it's just too much. Do you know what I mean? Put a fucking joke the on fact man. that You've got Sandra <laughs> from Google Strand putting some comments on with like Tom Hardy's face, like saying, I live my life like the lion, not the sheep. And all this is like, what the fuck are you on about? You sit yeah. in different lands, watching fucking yeah. repeats of fucking supermarkets. Yeah, the same You're people saying that. that. The same people saying that. I'd be climbing up a fucking mountain a week after with all the mates going, we've hammered this, we've conquered this mountain. Fucking sheep climb Nevis. mountains. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Nevis, yeah. Everest next, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do Mount Fuji. That's oh, what I'd love to do. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm trying to convince Roxanne to do the honeymoon in Japan. And I, that, that's one of the things I'd want to do. She wants to fuck off to bed. But I'm like, I'm not doing that. I, I want to go to Japan, mate. You know what? Oh, I, yeah. I just love the idea of me walking down the street, six foot three, eighteen and a half stone, and all these <laughs> Japs with their heads around my waist, just thinking I'm like Godzilla. <laughs> well, I want to go. I want to go so I feel normal size. <laughs> <laughs> But I just, yeah, I love I the idea of Japan, lad. Uh, no, listen, I just always want to go. And um, like you said, though, that you said, because when you asked what we were up to now, it's not like so much the MMA gyms and that. We were opening at a, a pro wrestling school in Wigan called oh, Claw. Yeah. yeah, we feel like all, all I fell onto a, a fantastic job through one of my fantastic friends, Jordan, this not-so-fantastic lockdown. And I've just been earning, earning serious wedge, and I've had a lot of solitude. And what I've done, um, the person who's working here before it was a heavy drinker. The one, the other one was a heavy pot smoker. And all he was doing was just slobbing it up. I came in, took over all the hours. I'm just a, fi- I'm being, I'm just a fire marshal in the college. That's where I am now. Um, keeping the, the integrity of the building intact. and. Um, one of the classrooms, I set up a full weights gym. I've got all kinds of fucking weights and that in there. The, yeah. the, the, the room, the room is my living room. One room was full of mats, but they're now in the um, in the gym in Wigan. So I had all grappling, all my grappling mats here. Got a battle rope in the hall. And one of the pro wrestling rings we bought, we set it up upstairs to check it. So we had a few pro wrestlers in doing a bit of wrestling as well. So yeah. I had like a fun out while I was here. And um, that's what I've been doing. So me and uh, Jay Apter, who runs TNT, um, and TNT Ignition, um, the, the pro wrestling shows in Liverpool. Um, we we just we came together after I done one of my Jigoku shows. He said, "Let's put work together and all that." He, was, he had a bit of ale in him, so he was going, "Yeah." And then something else happened, and we went, "Yeah, let's do this." And then something else, but then we finally he went, um, "Let's put a wrestling show on together." So we're doing like Superstar Pro because that's always been my first love. It wasn't the uh, it wasn't the MMA, and the reason I done freestyle wrestling was because I thought it because it's called amateur wrestling. I thought it led to pro wrestling because when I was a kid, <laughs> believe it or not, I didn't know it was worked. 
Yeah, I thought yeah. it was a legitimate sporting comp. So, um, yeah, because I love the theatrics and I love the creativity because I, I write film scripts and everything. So, I like I, 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 I've definitely yeah. Like I've, I've always I've, done I've, it. I've, I'm, I'm on the third draft of my first script. Yes. What are you using, yeah. Celtic? So, final draft. Final draft, mate. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, just, uh, I'm, I'm dubious because I'm going to have to start showing it to people now and I'm sort of like. Listen, don't worry about it. Listen, never try and impress people. Just leave the door open for people to be impressed. I've always yeah. said that. Because, listen, I've done it. I you know what, done done it. Good A nice picture of Tom Hardy. Yeah, we'll fucking do it. I'm going to start putting pictures of me with a cigar. Because I've got well more fucking quotes than all these Hollywood tickets. I've got... Um, I could fuck them all as well. But... <laughs> um, I was going to say the... Um, Oh, what, was going, oh, what was I going on about? Sorry, it's the brain damage, that. The screenwriting? Yeah, well, when I was 19, my mate was online on MSN, get a load of that for a bit of retro, um, mm. talked to Matt Lucas before they even done Little Britain, and he was yeah. talking about sketches and that. And about three of our sketches ended up on Little Britain, because Matt Lucas is online, probably scrolling for men, isn't he? Young men. And my mate's on there. In his uh, when he was only like 19, 20, trying to meet celebs to get his um his his uh, his comedy sketch off the ground. Well, our comedy sketches, and uh, he ended up talking to him online, and he fucking ripped off about three or four of our sketches. He definitely robbed one of mine anyway. And um, yeah, two thousand and fifteen as well. Um, I done a fantastic synopsis for a doc a documentary about Dorman. It was something I tried to make in 2001, but the studio, because I was working in a media studio and I got sacked over quizzing this busy because uh, this policeman who got me, me, uh, me mate nicked uh, and he nearly went to prison over Christmas and he saved the lad's life outside the, the Barcelona bar. Yeah. Went out and fought with six lads who were battering one lad and he's the only one who got nicked. Fucking stupid. So I quizzed this busy, like proper berated him. And uh, I got sacked from the studio for it because they put a complaint. So I never got to do it. That was 2001. And then 2015, I put it to Channel 5. They loved it. They loved the idea. And then when he came back to me second meeting, it was a gay chap who took the the, the idea and he went, I, I love it. I fucking love it. I love it. I love the idea. I fucking love it. Mm. And he went, um, so he said, what's the hardest part about working the door? I told him it was hens. So then when he's come back in... Yeah. Um, when he's come back in, he's, he, he, he came up with the, the idea, hens behaving badly. And I just went, um, <laughs> no, I'm out. But I end up being on every... I end up being on every episode of it, because I weren't even... I weren't even going to be on it. But just coincidentally, I was working with Mike McBride at the time, and he, he asked me, do you want to be in this, docu this documentary and all that? About the door, and I went, yeah. And it ends up being that same fucking thing. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, no. It's, listen, I'm gonna look that up now. Yeah, hens behaving badly, but yeah, but it's um, I just refused the writing credit for that shit. It was probably shit, shit. So, but uh, what, what are you writing now? What are you writing now, horror? A book about the fucking a book from. Uh, I tell you what, I, I was going to fighting, and all stories about the door because everyone was raving over this lads. The uh, no, the lads who got thrown like by, by the goth. Did you see the Dorman no. story? No. It's uh, no. it vital. I saw him getting lashed by a goth. Um, like, all oh, my mates were grabbing a goth and he kept throwing us all. But uh, I've looked at him, the, the, lad, the lad's dad, he, who, uh, who does it. But um, it was me mate, Dave Winstanley. He was a traditional jiu-jitsu fella. <laughs> and that's who it was. He was a metal head. He wasn't a goth, but he had long hair and that. But that was him. Because he's always drunk on fucking thing. And every time he grabbed him, if he grabbed his clothes and that, or grabbed his wrist, something, he could just lash you. And that's yeah. who it was. But, um, yeah, I got blamed for it for a bit, but fucking definitely wasn't me. Yeah, it was Dave. But, um, yeah, I keep losing me. I keep losing track because I'm waffling on here, Neil. Sorry, mate. What are you about your book, lads? Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's about, uh, from, yeah, getting into fighting. Good job, Yori, yeah. Uh, from fighting up until 2011, when I won two world titles. But cause, yeah. Only because it was literally the story of it. You could actually put it into a movie, the way, the, the pacing of it. Because it was like... Like, everything was going so well for me. And I didn't want to go in the ultimate fight. I, did, I, I, got, I fought Aldo Casata when he was unbeaten. And he said, if you beat him, a good international opponent, you'll be in the UFC. I thought, I'll have one fight in the UFC, and I'll be happy then. Fucking everyone else will be happy, because it wasn't really my thing that I wanted to do. So I went, I'll just beat him, I'll fight, I'll get a few grand, and I'll 
fucking put in something else. Make a horror movie or something. Mm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, after the fourth in, they didn't air the, sh- the fight, so the UFC didn't get to see it. Fucking dickheads. Like Cage Gladiators, it was. Um, didn't air it. So then I was like, ah, oh, fucking leave it. I'll just grapple. And then the Ultimate Fighter came on. Uh, so then, I, I, like I said, I'd done it. I didn't re- not really ask. didn't think I'd get in. And then I got in. Um, and I think I only got in because of Jim Wallet's record. I think they wanted Jim Wallet in instead of me. And because um, we he's waited. In. Less than now, isn't he? Yeah, well, I don't, well, he's boss, Jim. I wish yeah. he was going to stay with them after the Ultimate Fighter. I didn't half have a laugh with him, man. Great. And, I, and listen, he hits harder than Daly, I tell you that. He's stiffer. It's like we had some great spars. He's a he's a boss lad. Um, so we, um, yeah. So it's just it's then it's like like the world's at my feet and that ultimate fight. I thought, you know what? I'll live it while I'm here. Then everything gets taken away with me from from illness. And you'll end up you'll read about it in the book and Dana White because he's a fucking wanker as well. Um, yeah, like bad wanker, like sociopathic wanker though, like the worst type. So. Um, Yes, but you read about it. It's too convoluted to fucking explain a lot now. And fucking people call bullshit on it. But I don't lie about stuff, do you know what I mean? Especially well, shit like that. But so anyway, Paul Daly, like, I mean, I know Paul Daly's not, like, the most easy character to get on with. But when I spoke to him, yeah. he was saying, like, Dana White just wanted them to, like, bow down. And he said, I'm is. not going to do that. I'm not yeah. going to do that. He went, I'm just going to tell him what I think and he can deal with it. And he said, yeah. I mean, it didn't help punch and cough Josh Koscheck after the bell, like, but... He said, you know, I just had an old phone. No, that that's that's exactly what it is. I think it's a sexual thing on a deeper level for Tina White. I think he just has all these pictures and like, I am your master. Like has a little <laughs> teddy bears with all our faces cut out on it and like and, Got yeah, a picture of you in a black vest and a luchador mask on his wall. <laughs> yes. <that? laughs> yes, sexy. No, but he just doesn't um, yeah, he's just not he's just not that's what I'm saying. Here's the problem with the world as well. If someone's got listen, money's a cop out, money means fuck all. And if someone's got loads of money or someone's high esteem or like someone's like well known for something, people just put them on pedestals and think they're like these godlike characters. And I don't judge people on stuff like that. I judge them on who they are and what type of people they are. And I, I like people say, oh, you can't judge me. Listen, it's human nature to judge. And listen, he, he's under my judgments and it, the judgment is final. He is a wanker. He's a sociopath, a wanker. That's just being detailed on it. He's a terrible sociopath. It's like his way or no way, and he just doesn't listen. Doesn't listen to logic. Just doesn't listen. Because um, yeah, I made a little it, with him it, in is, it is a trait in people who are very successful, though, isn't it? That they're just yeah. selfish. There's no, there's no worry about anyone else. It's just my way or the highway, and that's where why they get into that position where they do have that money. Uh, yeah. So I can imagine it is probably the case. Like he's entertaining. Yeah, to but watch, I, like. I know loads. I know loads of him. Um, who were in that similar like posi- positions with similar money and not like that, but it's just again I, even when you say success it'll be money and business. But I was only because the, cause the person not, he is, yeah. he's not. It's not successful. He's not successful because of the person he is. That's that's the main thing. The person you are in life. That's that's the main thing, regardless of if you're living in a tree house or living in a tent it, it's or a living life. in a palace full of it's Playboy a- bunnies. It doesn't matter. It's a worry that, like, once you've got so much money, because he made billions off the, the first sale, if you're still chasing it, how happy are you? You're still chasing yeah. something that you've got, like, a mad abundance of. Well, it's like people like Floyd Mayweather. It's, I've got a terrible aversion to the way he is. Like, if you've got that money, right, If you the worst thing in, uh, you can you can lack is imagination. He went to Bangkok one night. There was a Bangkok or something. He went somewhere because he was bored. So he flew somewhere because he was bored. You'd never get bored with that money. It's like there's a French football player who retired earlier. I can't think of his name. Now, he started going around France in a little go-kart dressed as Mario, throwing banana skins on the cars. Now, that is what the type of shit you'd be doing. You wouldn't be like, oh, look, look at all my watches. I take these on holiday. What a prick. What a boring, boring prick. I'm walking around my pool and all my top clubber. But I'm not actually swimming. What a stupid, boring prick! It's just I don't. Get, it's, I just don't get it. I, don't, I don't have get said like when, when people say like you win. <laughs> yeah, when people say you win the lottery, what are you getting a Lamborghini and that? I'm like, I'm getting a fucking monster truck, me like. Yeah, I'm getting a monster truck or a tank. See, I even like the way Chris Eubank was. 
So he's got he tries to make American truck like a park anyway, because you can pay the you can pay the fine. But he's a it's just like my my thing if I'm gonna be a millionaire, do you know all these pools I can like the, the parks they've got rivers or lakes that are getting used for nothing, but people like fishing for them bloated fish they put in. I just I just get the rights to the Jaws ride and just make Jaws rides all over Liverpool. That's what I'd do. It'd be about like taking the kids to the park. And it's like, that's, the, that's what I'd do. I, I mean, I love Jaws. I just love the movie. Right. So it's just like I'd do something exciting. I was even, honest God, I, I, I was at one point, I was fuming about the wages of footy players and the fact that they don't do anything good with it. So I was going to start like something like to make it a, a, a government thing where they've got to take it like 15% of the weekly wage or just just footy players based in Liverpool and make them make make them build a fairground, a theme park on the dock. They could they could they could literally fund that in a week if all of them just threw a fucking percentage in. There's a there's a fairground instead of walking around fucking town with scarves and no socks on like wankers. You know what I mean? Well, Do something. You know, uh, it's a big discussion and it's not one that I want to get into. But I do oh, notice yeah. like. You, you see Anfield and Goodison and the poverty that surrounds them two grounds. I mean, I'm not saying poverty like fucking Africa and that, but you see yeah. some people who are struggling to eat. You've got kids who've got like fucking family problems and all that. And the clubs, I mean, Everton does to some degree, and I know Liverpool probably will, but the money that they've got, the amount they contribute is just... Mm. It's 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 peanuts really, isn't it? Like, I mean, for me, like, if you're if you've got those two clubs based in that area, and the majority of your fans come from a couple miles square radius, or like that, you can throw some money back at the fans and that, like, you know what I mean? You can bring up the area that you're surrounded by. No, easy, mate. It's just a say, the ride, the ride. Gobshites who don't give a fuck or lying about how much money they're getting. <laughs> it's one or the other. It's just, um, I just, I, it's just, it's shit like that. I just, it's the stuff I hate about the world. And I will use the word hate because, like I said, hate is motivational. Hate makes you do something about it um, eventually. But yeah, like I said, yeah, it's a heavy one, isn't it? And like, so people, people hold them as gods. I made, um, there was a Spanish midfielder for Liverpool because I don't know any of the footy players now. Spanish. <laughs> Other than yeah, Jack. well, it, it, it was a few years ago, I think it was 2000. And I was on Alma de Cuba just one night for New Year. Alonso, wasn't it? I couldn't even tell you. It was like he had very, just all short, like shaved, like not nice like skinhead, but short shaved, very short hair. Um, I can't think who it was, but there was, there was all people I knew in the queue, all freezing, we couldn't let them in. And someone's been walked in and I just, everyone who walked in because I was just there, I had to do my job there for this suspe specific reason, <laughs> suspicious reason. Um, so I went, who's he? And the manager went, um, what do you mean? Like, so he didn't know me, the manager just went, who's he? He said, there's people waiting out there, who the fuck's he? And he went, he's Tango, someone uh, uh, from Liverpool. He went, so he's got loads of dough. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. I said, well, it doesn't mean he can come in, he can wait like everyone else. And he was going, and you see, he said to all the other when we were there, like, who's there? Who's, who the fuck's seen the new lad? Whoa. And he went, Listen, it was just, you have to go, they were buzzing off it, they loved it. Uh, Mark Smith was there, and um, I think he was on the front, and my mate, um, yeah, yeah, my mate Gary was down there as well, and um. They were like, they were fucking buzzing off me. But I went buzzing, I was serious, do you know what I mean? I went, well, he said, um, no. I said, I'm not allowing him to come out. I don't know who he is. And he couldn't believe I didn't know who he was. I literally, yeah. genuinely didn't know who he was. I don't follow it. But I went, I'm not having that. Because it, it's morally wrong as well. And I'm not one of these moral righteous warriors, but just stuff like that. If, if, where there's a, a moment I can control and make the, the wrong right, I'll do it. Um... And I went, listen, we can go out and wait with everyone else. Went, oh, what are you going to do here? I went, well, yeah. He's getting him for free. Make him pay. Make him pay for everyone in that line then. Make him pay for everyone in that line because that's not enough him. If he say, if you say he is who he is, you say he is who you say he is, then he can pay for everyone, no problem. And then like his, his translator's there, he's going, so he goes, ah, ah. I was made up then and pay for everyone on the card. Pay for him. Not yes. issue. Absolutely no issue to him. And he went, burn. He shook my hand. And like, give me a little pat on me back. And then it's, ah, oh, and then it's, it's because it's, he felt like a clown, lad. <laughs> no, but he was sad. He was like, he must have loved, he must be, he must be a good egg himself. 
because he weren't asked, and he just went. And he's, oh, he's probably said, this one won't let you in, like, you get better pay, yeah. I don't know. But he went, um, and then he's gone, oh, fucking hell, it's pointless than Cuban, just let them all in. And everyone's like, yeah, get in. So <laughs> I knew football was going to cabin, lad. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was, that was, yeah, that was Arm of the Cuba, that one. That was, yeah. Um, yeah. But that's why I liked, listen, that's why, another thing, I did, I'd stopped the door and I did like the cabin, I went back there, because it was like, it's like working for the Liverpool tourist trade, it was good. You're meeting people from out of town. You ain't dealing with, like, because there's, there's like a negative, um, I know people love Liverpool and all that, but there's like a negative film over the whole Scouse-ism thing. There's like a yeah. negative film over it. Do you know what I mean? The way they're very acceptant of like drug dealers and very acceptant of the drug culture and the very acceptance of just being fucking horrible to each other. I mean, the loveliest people from our town, but the horrible, but all horrible to each other. And it's just um, meeting people from out of town and... Like coming into the cavern, you were proper buzzing being in Liverpool because they didn't really know what it was like and that. And, it was, and I used to buzz talking, I like talking to happy people. It's, it's boss. It's 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 good in a sense, lad, but because you're in Liverpool, people probably yeah. don't make that many jokes. And I don't mind the jokes, but because I live in Gran Canaria and that now, when you yeah. walk down, as soon as they hear your fucking accent, ah, oh, chicken chips, can of coke, can of coke, chicken chips, all this shit. Are you sick of it? It's bad, yeah. yeah. but yeah. all the PRs on the bars know me, but they still do it. And I I pulled one of them, this fucking Turkish fella, and I went, I'll fucking chin you in it and chin you. And I'll fucking chin yeah. you in it, you, you racist prick. And he went, I'm not yeah. being racist. And I went, all oh, right. I went, where are you from, Africa? And I went, Ogden, Ogden, Big Bog. And I went, is that racist? He went, yeah. And I went, then calling me chicken chips every fucking day is racist. Fuck off. Now, I yeah. was just messing. I was just making the point because it had been two years listening to it. So I thought, I'm just going to make a show of him. And like everyone was like saying to him, yeah, it's a bit racist. It's a bit racist, mate. And in the end, he was apologising to me and I felt a bit arse. But I just thought, you know what? I'm just fucking sick of listening to it. Yeah. It's sound, listen, though, it, I, I used to get like that, like with people like, and if, uh, just some, I, I don't know for sure. And it was just a verbal. Then like they're all apologetic. But it's a life lesson. It's, 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 it, that's forever that. Don't make that mistake with someone else and they'll be better than themselves. It's not, it's not, again, it's not me being like overtly positive. It's just right. Yeah. It's like, um, it's like I used to get pissed off buying things, not off wish, but not like offline. And it's like, <laughs> you get like, a, like a memory card that said like it was one terabyte and it'd be dog shit. It didn't work. But usually I'd be like pissed off. But now I just get it and I'm not like 20 quid for something or 50 quid. That's knowledge now. I know never to get it again. Think of all the other yeah. 50 quid saved. It's just, uh, it's just that uh, when that that I think that's the, the the superpower you get when you get into your forties. You start le letting them. Um, you become very, uh, very sharp with your morals and stuff. It's like you just stop like uh, like the bullshit stuff. You can see good in shite, but you can see extra shite in real shite. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's you just, know what? Um, I don't know if it's wisdom, lads, or if the more I'm approaching my forties, I'm just sort of. I've seen and heard everything before. Mm. Like, you know, when you're saying about the film scripts, one of yeah. the things was everything I'm writing, I'm kind of like, I've seen and heard that before. Because I used to be in the video shop, like picking a video up, two or three of them on a Saturday, going home, watching them two or three on a Sunday. I've watched and seen everything. Mm. And then all I'm watching is remakes of everything. Nothing's original anymore and all that. And I just, mm. when it comes to life as well, I've seen and heard it all before. And now I've got mm -hmm. the kids, I'm watching them and going, why are they surprised by that? That's just, you know, something that's yeah. happened a million times in life. And I know what you mean, lad. Like, yeah. But I just, I feel like it's just not so much wisdom, just experience. Yeah. No, no, it's definitely, it's definitely a part because it's definitely a part, isn't it? It's just like, but like stuff like, um, stuff that used to wind me up as well. Like, like I say, getting ads off for like 20 quid online, yeah. you like piss me off. Like, it's not even like that. I'm like, yeah, it's just I, it makes me a bit. I'm a bit more outgoing because of it. I'm not scared of like me, having a failure from it because it's got well, it won't happen again. It's I'm just there. Uh, yeah. I got I got an Under Armour tracky from uh, JD sent over to me, and it, it fucked up the the badge on it. So I spent three days on the JD Facebook page just slating them, and I just copying and pasting, slagging them off onto each comment. <laughs> like just for I'm never going back to England to go get this sorted at JD. So I'm just going to yeah. fucking slate them to death. On Facebook and just slaughtered them for ages, lads. I'm still, I'm still a bit petty like that. <laughs> no, it's good. 
It's good to know. Just just keep it because as long as you start just like chuckling to yourself with it, because they listen to the multi pound, million pound, billion pounds, zillion pound company, whatever they are. And and so I don't, fuck, I don't even think I've set foot in it. That's become not even like um, it used to be a sports, didn't it? Sports shop. It's like yeah. the sports shop. It's like it's the fashion now, isn't it? The, yeah, the fashiony sports stuff. It's funny, man. Like I was at the school the day, and like. Most of the mums in gym gear, not one of them's ever been in the gym. I love these fads. I just think, I just find, do you know what? I should eventually, eventually, with all the material I've got, just do an observational stand up comedy set somewhere because I've yeah. just got loads of stuff I notice. And sometimes, you know, when I've had like a T5 after training and I'll phone my mate and start ranting about stuff, he's just <laughs> like, angry and he's pissing himself down the phone, which is making me worse. So that'll probably happen with the crowd. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Rox always says to me when I come home, like, she knows if something's happened because I've got this look on my face and I'll start off with, like, this cunt, right? And it's just like, she'll just turn <laughs> around and start doing the dishes. She just doesn't want to listen to it, lad. It's just like, it's too much because I just ran for about two hours. It's like just non-stop anger, like, comes out and just... Because I know I can't do it to the kids. But uh, yeah. that being said, lads, I've had you for nearly an hour and a half here. And I appreciate right. the time, Dave. Is there anyone you want to shout out to? Do you want to give the data when you're doing your wrestling tournaments? No, but the thing, oh, the um, our wrestling show, our wrestling school, Claw, opens on Monday the 24th in Wigan, in um, Brookhouse Terrace. It's going to open, the first class will be six o'clock. And it's, they, they, we call it a soft opening at the minute. So we're just going to see how it runs and get the system in place. And then we're going to have a big event, a big, like a real opening event. Going to get the, the mayor of Wigan and everything down. So, um, yeah, well, not not the mini, not the mini. Just uh, no shout out to any people. Because someone will get a cob on, I've missed them out. <coughs> uh, or, yeah, or someone will get a cob on, I didn't give them a big enough testimonial. But, um, well, no worries. But when you get yeah. a date for the show, give us a bell. Oh yeah, about. yeah, sound. Yeah, well, um, I'm just, I'm, that's what we're waiting on now. We're waiting for dates to get confirmed because we did have dates all booked in before the, uh, the second lockdown. Is it? I'm not, not sure. I'm not even asked anymore. But then when know. we've come back, yeah, when, when we've come back to um, speak to the companies, they just whitewashed all the, all the dates. So we've had to like re-put in for them. So uh, we're just yeah few things pending and um, I mean the world and all we've got we actually pay a guy to all our um, all our advertising online for one of our mates we pay him a wage so um, he, he's, he's all over it young kid with loads of online energy <laughs> yeah, yeah even, if he's to, even if he likes it in the gym it doesn't matter he's got online energy he can do it more games in his spare time lad <laughs> that, well, you're in the same, you're in the right ballpark now. <laughs> <laughs> no worries, yeah. lad. Well, look, Dave, I massively appreciate it. Apologies for a bit of lag on my end. Like I say, when you're abroad, sometimes it happens. It's pointless yeah. being start and stop. I've got a shit phone, so don't worry about it. Nah, no worries. Um, but yeah, if you're watching, thanks to Dave. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you get the information as it happens, when it happens. I'm going to be back tomorrow night with Ashley as well. We're going to do a review of the UFC 262 that's just gone. And then we're going to preview the Cody Garbrandt Spawn fight on the weekend. So don't be a tit. Make sure you watch. And Dave, thanks again, mate. Appreciate it. Boss, mate. Thank you, Neil. Boss, seeing you, mate. You too, man.